Hello, everybody. You're in the house of the Lord, Dixon, Tennessee. This is Thursday night with Bobby Jean. Uh, I want to make an announcement. Uh, Bob will probably make an announcement on Friday night, but uh, I appreciate everyone that tunes in, and I just wanted you to know that uh, I'm scheduled for surgery on Monday, and I, I thank you for all your prayers. And uh, but I I don't know when I'll be able to do Thursday night again. On your hip. Yes, I'm having hip replacement surgery. Um, so anyway, um, we're gonna. I I just appreciate everybody, and we're gonna we're gonna study a little bit tonight on healing is the children's bread, and uh, it's. Uh, in some ways, it's a simple teaching. In other ways, there's such debate about healing that it, it, we're just going to read the word. I want you to take a hold of the word, and I want you to know that if you're sick tonight, it's not because Jesus don't love you or God forgot you or, or anything like that. And it's not because you've sinned. You know, uh, there was this one priest he said, I've been a priest for 35 years, and I know two things. There is a God, and I'm not him. So what we're, we don't know. His ways are higher than the heavens above our ways. We can read all through the word, which I want you to walk through the word with me tonight. And, but all through the word, uh, it talks about healing. And... We're going to, uh, I, I'm still praying about where to start. And so let's go to prayer and let's just see where the Lord takes us. I don't know whether it's going to be short or long. I just give it to God and I do my best to go where he tells me to go and do what he says. Okay. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We do know that healing is the children's bread. It doesn't matter how we feel. We know that our body lies against the truth of your word sometimes. But we know we are healed. We know, Jesus, you took those stripes for our healing 2,000 years ago. We know, Father, that you are and you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. And we are so grateful, Father, for all of your abundant blessing. I'm so grateful, Father, that you've healed me so many times. And I thank you, Father, for I know you're going before me. I know you're going to guide the surgeon's hand. And I know you can heal me before I get there. But, Lord God, not my will, Father. Thy will be done. I commit spirit, soul, and body into your hands. And I am yours, Lord. As it says in Romans I am your slave. I am your servant. I am yours, O oh Lord. And I know you are well able. I commit myself. I commit this teaching tonight into your hands. And I know you are well able to keep that which we commit into your hands. Now, Father, I pray that you would anoint my ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Anoint my lips to speak, Father, and anoint the ears of all of those, Lord God, that would tune in and listen to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to take you, first of all, I'm going to go to Ephesians. And the reason I'm going to Ephesians is because I've... Ephesians chapter 1. I've taught several to, to when you pray. If you don't know how to pray, we're Ephesians chapter 1, and I start at verse 16, and I believe in praying the Word of God. And I'm going to read it, and yet I'm going to pray it, okay? So agree with me again in prayer. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, at verse 15, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, mentioning, making mention of you in my prayers. Now this is, this is what we pray. 
And it, this is a good scripture to start with. If you're getting into the word on your own and you want to know how to pray, this is a good prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And we pray, verse 17, Heavenly Father, we pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Father, we pray the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened and that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in, in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And it put all things under his feet. Now we read that we were in Christ. So if all things are under his feet, all things are under our feet, for we're in Christ. Amen and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, verse 18 says, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. And in 17, it says the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So I have, I teach that when I'm teaching my folks in Michigan and anyone that'll listen to me, I teach them to go to the word and to pray that because it, these things are spiritually discerned. There's nobody that knows everything. And if, if you come across somebody that thinks they know everything, run, do not walk, run to the nearest door and get out of there. Because Jesus hasn't revealed everything. There's still mysteries in the kingdom. There's still mysteries that God is, and I believe that he's unveiling them in this day, but nobody has it all yet. Amen. We're pressing for the mark, pressing for the mark of the high calling. So we're going to, uh, I want you to, I believe I'm going to do one more thing. Let's go to Exodus. I'm going to read you my little grandson. He loves to quote these scriptures when he's praying for folks. Because I want you to know that healing just isn't in the New Testament. It was always God's plan that his children should be healthy. Okay? And in Exodus 15 and verse 26, he said, And I said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon e the Egyptians. Here it is. For I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Now when you look that up, I know you've heard me several times say Jehovah Rapha. Well, here it is, the Lord that healeth thee, Jehovah Rapha. And I want you uh, to go to Exodus 23, 26, okay? And in 23, 26, it says... <laughs> God love little Isaac. Thank you, Jesus. It's uh, actually, I think it's 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And if you ever have little Isaac pray, he'll, he'll say, Lord, you said I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, and I will take sickness out of the midst of thee. <laughs> so, and it's, it's good. It's good, amen. But I wanted you to know. I wanted you to know that from the very beginning, that when he, he called the people his, he had healing. And I want you to know it is God's will. Don't you let anybody tell you that it's not God's will for you to be healed. Now walk with me all the way to Mark chapter 7. 
Okay? And we're going to start reading in verse 24. Okay? Mark 7, 24. And from thence he, Jesus, arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, entered into a house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Now, you see, we're going to read on here. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread. This is where we get that healing is the children's bread. But he said to her, Let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs. Now, how would you feel if you went to Jesus and you asked him and he said, um, It's not meat, you know, to give the children's bread to dogs. But look her humility. When you go to the Lord in prayer, don't go in pride. Always humble yourself. Humble yourself. Submit yourself under the mighty hand of God because God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. And it is through humility. Amen. And this is what she said. Verse 28. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Verse 29, he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Now, there's... There's going to be, when you're reading in Mark, as you read through the book of Mark, you're going to see a lot of times when people were healed that he cast out a devil. Now, I'm not saying every time you break your leg or anything. That's why I was a little bit hesitant. But the, but Jesus has authority. And you are in Christ. You have authority. Okay? So another thing I wanted to show you, because he said, healing is a children's bread. You got to love Jesus. Go to uh, John chapter 6. Okay? John chapter 6. Now, those of you that are taking notes, that uh, scripture is also about healing being the children's bread in Matthew 15, 26. But we're in John chapter 6, and we're going to start reading at the 32nd verse. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Verse 34. And they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Verse 35, this is John 6, 35. I don't want you to get lost. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread. Don't you love that? I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and ye believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? 
Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come unto me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. You see, I wanted to bring you here, obviously, because Jesus was teaching that healing is the children's bread. And then he turned around and said, I am that bread. I am, hallelujah, I am the bread of life, hallelujah. Verse 48, I am the bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. Excuse me. A man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. That's health, right? He shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. We, we know that Jesus gave his life. And we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to Matthew, okay? I want to show you something here in Matthew. And people that, that are earnest before the Lord, he said, I would in no wise cast them out. He's not going to turn you away. Now we're in Matthew chapter 12, and we're going to start at the ninth verse. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then he saith to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole as the other. Now we're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 4. Go back just a little bit further. Matthew chapter 4. I want to say one more thing, you know, um, when you're sick and you're believing God and you're even praying for other folks that are sick and you're believing God to heal them and you're just trusting God that there's a reason, amen, his waves are higher than the heaven. If you believe in healing, even when you're sick, that, that is, that is worthy of admiration. Okay. Cause it's hard to believe in healing and it's, uh, a lot of folks murmur and mumble and grumble and complain when they're, you know, they're seeing everybody else being healed and they're not healed. Honey, be patient with the Lord. I, I knew a man that um, he was put in jail. Okay, I'm just saying circumstances. He was put in jail. And when he was in the holding, there was a man that didn't have any legs that was in there. And he ministered unto him and he prophesied unto him. And he, of course, the man that didn't have any legs was there unjustly because he couldn't have done what they said he did. <laughs> but God had allowed that man to be put in jail. Now there's prisons of every kind. And sometimes God will allow you to go to the hospital because there's someone there that needs to see Jesus. And sometimes God will allow you to be uh, taken to jail. <laughs> I mean, Paul was in jail. And, but there's always a reason. And we've got to get to the place where we know that Romans 8.28, it says we know. 
we know. <laughs> Do we know? I'm going to read it to you, and I know I'm going to keep my finger in Matthew 4 too, but we need to really get this because Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, you love God and you're called according to his purpose. Bob loves God and he's called according to his purpose. I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. But we're not walking in divine health yet, but that doesn't mean we won't. And I don't want you to give up and I, don't, I want you to hold on to your faith. I want you to hope in the Lord. I want you to trust that he, he has your good. Amen. These things are going to work to your good in his glory. You just wait patiently on the Lord, no matter how you feel. And I know that it's going to be well with you. I believe it's going to be well with, with Bob. My family, I heard from them today, and they, they said that everyone in Michigan that knows and loves Bob is holding their breath, waiting for him to have this surgery. His surgery is going to be in July. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not concerned. I mean, not that I don't love Bob with all my heart. And Bob's not concerned. <laughs> Truthfully, uh, I'm a little concerned about how much pain I'm going to go through. But I know that God is going to be with me. And I know that God is with him. But when you're trusting and believing God, no matter how you feel... And I'm telling you, and I've told you before, lift your hands and praise the Lord. I've been in pain that, that had me in tears, and I, I lifted my hands, and I praised the Lord. Honey, because you've got to trust him that much. You've got to trust him that he knows more than you do. You've got to trust him that you are more than a conqueror through him that loved us. And once you believe how greatly he loves you, and once you believe that he's doing this for your good and his glory there there are things that we just don't understand but we have to love him and trust him amen so now we're going to go back to matthew chapter 4 you can read all of romans 8 it's really good it, in there is about intercessory prayer and how he ever intercedes for us okay so that's romans 8 so now we're in Matthew chapter 4, okay? Now, Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 23. Actually, we're probably only going to read verse 23, but it's all good, but I want you to get this. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. Now, didn't we just read how Jesus was in the synagogue and He's, the man stretched forth his hand and the Pharisees were trying to get him in trouble, trying to say that he was breaking the law of the Sabbath. Okay. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Now, I'm going to take you right here to... Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Now, there's a reason I'm going here. I had a little friend, and she was very, very uh, fragile, physically fragile. And she was going into the hospital, and they were sending out, actually sending out flyers, don't come to the hospital uh, because there's uh, mutated germs. These are germs that antibiotics, antibiotics won't touch because they've mutated over all the antibiotics. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so I was really concerned because she had to go to the hospital. Now, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Surely he hath delivered me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Now, you can go to Revelation 16 too, and you'll see there's noisome 
pestilence there. I thought it was very interesting that all the way through the word, he talks about healing you. And uh, let me let me go over there and read you that. Some of you may, some of my little ones may not even know where Revelation is. And that's because they just started. I have, I have babies in my church. Revelation 16, 2 says, And the first went out and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore. Same word. <laughs> so we see here that surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Honey, God's got it all. You don't have to sit around and be in terror. You know, you don't have to worry because God has got this. I told you before that in Matthew 24, when his disciples came to him and said, oh, what is the sign of all this? And he said, see, let not your heart be troubled. I taught that the other night. Honey, God does not want you in fear. I told you there was a friend of mine that, I mean, here I am in Tennessee, and, my, and the Lord just kept saying, call her, call her. I was like, okay. So I called her. And I called her, when I called her, of course, I called her by name. And I said, you know, God is, I was just over here minding my own business, walking through the house in Tennessee, and God told me to call you and tell you to turn, turn that news off, put you on a funny movie, quit upsetting yourself. Now, you see, isn't that something now that God knows? Now, we read in the other scripture, you know, when the king said, who is the spy? And he said, no one, but there's a man over there, a prophet in Israel that's telling, telling the king what you're speaking in your bedchamber. <laughs> so, honey, God knows. He knows that you're upsetting yourself with watching news and being upset about wars and rumors of wars. And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Honey, God does not want you upset. And did you know that when you are allowing all this, that you can get ulcers, you can get cancer, you, you know, all this stress on you, it, it can cause sickness. Then that's why I've been trying to teach you fear not. You need to go to God and ask God to show you how to let not your heart be troubled. How do I do that, God? How? Well, I'll tell you one way is through praise. He inhabits the praise of his people. When you're in pain or in fear or anything and you, you just start praising the Lord and you just start thanking him for everything you can think of, he inhabits the praise of his people. And his, his, in his presence is fullness of joy. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's peace that passes all understanding. And it can all be yours if you would just quit your fretting and worrying, complaining and grumbling, and start praising. Amen. Now, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 says that they put praise in front of the, the army to praise the beauty of holiness. That 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat, he was the king. And what, what ruler nowadays is going to put a choir in front of the army? But I'm telling you to put praise in front of your battle, okay? Put praise. You, you'll be amazed if you, if you just start, even through your tears, if you just start thanking him and praising him and just worshiping him. And Jesus taught, I believe it's in John 4, that they that uh, worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So here we are in Psalms 91. And I was telling you about my friend. She's passed now. She was older. Her name was Darlene. It says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snow, snare pardon me, of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Do you remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth? Do you remember in John 1, 1 and in John 1, 14, he said, in the, <laughs> in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. So we see that Jesus is the truth. I hope you got that. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night 
nor for the arrow that flieth by noonday, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Now I brought you here because the Lord told me about Darlene when I was praying for her because she had to go into that hospital that was sending out warnings. He's the pestilence that walks in darkness are part of that is germs. Okay. Cause you can't see them without a microscope. So they walk in darkness. You can't see them. The pestilence that walks in darkness. He told me to just pray for her and to use this scripture and to trust him that he was going to protect her from, from all of this and for, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Honey, and I did, and she came out of that fine. <laughs> and it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Now what did I tell you? He inhabits the praise. It's you've made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. You can do that through praise. You see, uh, I just try to break it down and... And because I know there, I've got my little ones in Michigan that are watching. And, you know, so this may be very elementary to you, but some, some of the simplest things are the most profound. And some people go all their lives and they don't realize how much God loves them and how close he can be if you would just lift your hands and trust him and praise him. It says... Make the most high thy habitation. Remember, he inhabits the praise of his people. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Honey, there is so much in the word of God for you. And that's why I tell you so many times, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Shalom, our peace, Jehovah Tidskenu, our righteousness, Jehovah Shalom, our peace, hallelujah, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, he is, he will meet you, is what I'm trying to say, he will meet you at your point of need, he is, whenever the children of Israel needed him, he appeared unto them, as Jehovah Jireh, their provider, he, he, he'll, he has, he is, and he will. And I know I say that a lot, but I know that as it's got to go from head knowledge, you may just, oh yeah, okay, he has, he is, and he will. But by experiential knowledge, that drops the 18 inches and it's written on the tables of your heart and you can walk this out because God has written these things on your heart. It's not just a head knowledge, it's a heart reality. It's a heartfelt reality, you know. And God will allow you to know, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He shall call upon me, verse 15, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, how many times have I showed you in Isaiah 53 that he said the trance that are, uh, I'm going to go over there and read that. I, I know, I know, I'm taking you all over tonight, but I hope you're enjoying this. I'm just trying to be led, okay? Isaiah 53. Now, you'll see that it says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. 
Now listen, he was wounded for our transgressions. So the first thing that God did was remove the sin problem. Now, maybe none of you have read in Isaiah 59, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand, Isaiah 59, 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Hallelujah. So when you go to Jesus, New Testament now, this is Old Testament, Old Covenant, Old Testament, but the New Covenant is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when you go to him, this is talking about what Jesus was going to do at Calvary in Isaiah 53. It's a prophecy. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, for our sin. So the first thing he did was take sin out of the way. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So he had that crown of thorns, our peace, you, it's our soul, our character, our mind, our intellect, the chastisement of our peace. So we see spirit, got the sin out of the way, soul, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, our body. So spirit, soul, and body, Amen. God is just wants you to know he, his salvation is absolutely complete. You are complete in him. Now in the King James version, a lot of places where it says perfect. If you look that up in the strongs, you'll see that it says complete, complete. You are complete. You are perfect in Christ Jesus. You are complete because we are in him. That doesn't mean that we've got it all together yet, that we don't have to. Uh, let me take you to Philippians. Hallelujah. I don't know where I'm going. I told you that when we started. Lord knows I've got pages here, but we're going to follow the Lord tonight. How about that? Is that good for you? That's all I know to do, I'll tell you. So we're going to go to Philippians, okay? And I want to show you here what Paul said, okay? He said... Thank you, Jesus. Philippians chapter 3. He said, uh, Concerning zeal, he was telling them. Concerning zeal, he persecuted the church, touching righteousness, which is of the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung. Now for you little ones, dung is what comes out of the south end of a northbound bird. Okay. <laughs> is that plain enough? That I may win Christ. Verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Now, we know that our, our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's why he said, not my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Do you remember we, we learned about that? Abraham, he... He believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So not our own righteousness, but the righteousness is by faith, just by trusting in Jesus, trusting in him, that I may know him. Now, I love that he was saying that he wanted to know him. Ten years after that he had come, he was still saying, I want to know him. But listen to this. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. We read a lot about that too. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, 
but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. I want to get that which God got me for. Is that plain enough? Okay, verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I'm not telling you that I've got it all. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Now, the thing is with Paul, he, he was telling him that he was all that to the Jewish religion, and he counted it all but dung that he might win Christ. And he's saying here, when he's forgetting those things which are behind, he's forgetting all of the how good he was and all how bad he was in persecuting the Christians. He had to let it all go. All of his pomp when he was when he was walking with the Sanhedrin and and the high priest and all when he was he had when he had all that notoriety from being all that and he had to forgive himself also for persecuting the saints. Forgetting those things which are behind. You can't neither, no matter how great you are or were or whatever, or no matter how bad you were or are or whatever, that doesn't matter. It's from this moment on, you believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and going on from here, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. Now he's saying, I don't have it, but I'm going to reach for that which God has gotten me for. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now listen, let us therefore as many as be perfect, complete, perfect, be thus minded. Now I stand on this one. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So, we're not saying, like Paul, we're not saying that we're complete yet, but 99 and a half won't do. There's an old song, 99 and a half won't do. I'm pressing for 100. I'm pressing for 100. 99 and a half won't do. Honey, you've got to give him everything. 99 and a half won't do. Hallelujah. So we see all these things. Hallelujah. And... I don't know. Um, I want to show you one more thing, okay? We're going to go to Luke chapter 8. And I'm closing. I know some of y'all think I ain't never going to shut up. I've, I've been told that my train of thought has no caboose. But <laughs> you can laugh. It's okay. <laughs> so we're going to Luke chapter 8. Okay, and we're going to read from about verse 41 to about verse 56. I'm going to read you a story here, okay? And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and fell down at Jesus' feet, and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. He was kind of like a rock star for you kids that don't know. <laughs> they thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him, and touched the border of his garment. This is where we get they touched the hem of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood was stanched. It stopped, okay? And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee. And thou sayest, who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody touched me. All those pushing on him, they didn't touch him, but somebody touched him. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And the woman, when the woman saw that she 
was not hid. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith, her humility and her faith. Do you see these two women who put aside everything and just went to Jesus humbly? You see, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Now let me, now hold your finger here, and I want you to go with me to Leviticus, okay? Now we see in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 7, that there's atonement for this issue of blood. This is why she was so afraid, by the way. This is why I'm taking you here. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, okay, so Leviticus, and we're going to chapter 12, and we see that in chapter 12, it says, uh, 12, who shall offer it before the Lord, and shall make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from her issue of blood. This is the law for her that hath born. Okay, so anyway, it's talking about sh she was bleeding. Now, there's another scripture that I always tell people that's in uh, Ezekiel. And it talks about, I have never seen it not work about an issue of blood. We may go there later, but I want you to go over right now to uh, Leviticus 15, and I want you to see why she was so afraid, because they were still under law in that day, okay? So we see in verse uh, 25, okay? And he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour oil into the palm of his own hand, and the priest shall sprinkle his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear, of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of the right hand, upon the great toe of his right toe. Okay, now, okay. Anyway, it was talking about being cleansed. She was unclean. Why am I? Uh, 1525. Am I in the. Okay. 1525. Okay, that must have been for leprosy. So, <laughs> but here we go. It says, okay, but if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number herself seven days that she shall be clean. So whenever a woman was bleeding, it was, they counted it to her for uncleanness and she was separated now, you can go further into the law and find out all that, but you see there it said about her uncleanness, okay, and to be cleansed. This is why, because Jesus hadn't, you know, he said, I didn't come to do away with the law, I came to fulfill it, okay? And so this woman, she she's had this issue of blood for 12 years, and she, can you imagine being put out of the company for 12 years? Well, this poor little woman, that's why she had sought physicians and she'd done everything. She had lost all of her living but, and she, she couldn't be clean. They, they, well, that's the way they looked at it back then. Okay, this is why she came when she saw she was not hid. We're in Luke eight forty seven. She saw she was not hid. She came trembling and falling down before Jesus, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Verse 48, And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. 
Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. You're not in trouble. Okay? Now, you, for those of you that have always wondered about this scripture, like why in the world was she so scared? This is why. Why did she sneak up? Why did she touch? She knew if she touched just the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And she was immediately. But she was afraid because according to the law, she was unclean. You see? Okay, I just wanted to cover that for you. How good is Jesus that he's just so gentle? Okay, now we're going to continue on about the, uh, the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, and uh, how he fell at Jesus' feet. Now, when Jesus was going, all that went on. Okay, now we see in verse 49, while he yet spake. Am I making this clear? Okay, while he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Do you see how many times Jesus kept saying, Fear not? How that he went about doing good? How that he was comforting everyone? Honey, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just only believe. There's an old song. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Hallelujah. Then, and it just goes on. Only believe. Honey, if you can dare to believe what God will do for you. He has, he is, and he will. But we see that the, there was one that came to the ruler of the synagogue and saying, from the, synagogue, from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. Verse 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Believe only. Only believe. And she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house... He suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Jesus said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. Verse 53, And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. <laughs> Shows you what they do. Verse 54, and he put them all out. Hallelujah. Don't you love that? <laughs> they laughed him to scorn and he put them all out. <laughs> and, and took her by the hand and called her saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again and she rose straightway and commanded. And he commanded to give her meat. He said, give her something to eat. She's probably hungry. And her parents were astonished, but Jesus charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Hallelujah. Now, I'm telling you, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves you. He doesn't want you. <laughs> I've heard it said he doesn't want you sick, lame, or lazy. <laughs> But I'm telling you that it doesn't matter what is wrong with you, what is going on in your life. Jesus came to heal the sick. Jesus came so that you might have life and that more abundant. I believe that's John 10.10. 10. I'm going to read that to you. I believe in reading the word, obviously. John 10.10. 10. And I believe it reads, The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And read all of John 10. It's a really good one. John 10, 10. Yep. It says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Hallelujah. In verse 27, he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
honey, Jesus, that abundant life. Now, you don't have abundant life. Right now, I don't have abundant life, but I know that I'm going to be healed. And Bob said he was, uh, that he was going to dance with me. When we, were, when, when we were first married, he sang to me and we danced. And he, he promised me that he would dance with me again. He's shaking his head yes. So, but I don't have that abundant life now, but I believe in God that I will. And I believe in God that he will. And, and I, we have to trust the Lord, okay, that he knows what he's doing and that he loves us. Honey, just believe that he loves you. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We're asking you, Father, that you would give us ears to hear, that you would write your word on our hearts that we might not sin against thee, that you would help us, Father, that it would not just be a head knowledge, but it would be a heartfelt reality that it would drop the 18 inches from just being in our head to being in our spirit, in our heart, written on our heart. Lord God, we'll not fail to give you all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. And Lord God, I pray for all of those right now that are feeling sick, that are in any trouble of any kind. For I know that you can heal you can save, you can deliver. Father, whether it's financial or physical or mental, no matter what it is, in the name of Jesus, I speak life unto you. In Jesus' name, be thou made whole. And I know in whom I have believed, and I know it so. I love you, and I pray all the best for you. God bless you. Good night.